right now on Upfront. To the general, you can't love your country only when you win. President Biden delivering the State of the Union. The Trump-Biden rematch solidified. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. A new RNC chair, the vice president in Wisconsin. How do you beat Donald Trump in Wisconsin, Madam Vice President? How do you feel about one at a time? This Sunday, we've got it all. Republican Party of Wisconsin chairman and RNC member Brian Schimming from Houston, Congressman Mark Pocan from Washington. Then targeting Wisconsin judges. You've armed with a shotgun to take the life of the district attorney and of myself. Lawmakers on the verge of sweeping bipartisan new protections. Washera County Judge Guy Dutcher taking us inside the threats and what's expected in Madison this week. Then it's Oscar Sunday. Look, they do this in Ohio. They do it in Atlanta. They do it in New York. They do it in Louisiana. John Ridley, the Academy Award winning screenwriter and director from Milwaukee on the new push in Wisconsin to bring movie and TV production right here. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. A whirlwind week officially setting the stage for a long, historic, and unpopular Trump-Biden rematch in the race for president. President Biden will again be in Wisconsin this week. A midweek stop in Milwaukee is Nikki Haley's exit. All but assures former President Donald Trump will receive the Republican nomination this summer in Milwaukee. On Friday, Republican National Committee members officially accepted Ronna McDaniel's resignation and voted in Trump loyalist Michael Watley, chair of the North Carolina Republican Party, as the RNC's new chair. Just some eight months until Election Day. Brian Chimming, chair of the Republican Party of Wisconsin, is an RNC member. He was in the room when it all happened. He joins us from the RNC meeting in Houston. Hey, Brian, good to see you. Great to be with you. Beyond Michael, Laura Trump, also named co-chair Friday. Does this solidify Trump's control and power over the Republican Party and now the RNC? The truth of what happens, Matt, every four years is that the RNC and the presumptive nominees uh, efforts kind of meld together at some point during the election year. It happened a little bit earlier this year because of the results of the primaries and the caucuses. So really what's happening is something that usually happens anyway. But uh, here, here we are in March and we have new leadership. Michael Watley by some has been described as a, an election denier. Is he? No, I don't think so at all. I know Mike Wadley. He's very, very well regarded on the committee, amongst the committee members, and by people in the political world. Uh, he's um, spent a lot of time on the issue of, uh, of election integrity and early vote. Those are both issues that are of concern to us here in Wisconsin. So I'm thrilled with his election. I was going to say, Ronna McDaniel, as you know, was pushing that early vote program, especially in key battleground states like Wisconsin. Is that going to continue? It absolutely is going to continue. Um, Wisconsin was one of the first states I've pioneered doing early vote programs amongst the state parties. Really, we were the first state in the country to roll out the bank your vote effort. It is the key to winning. To those efforts, how difficult is it for you for a state party chairman when you have Trump just a few weeks ago saying you're going to automatically have fraud with mail-in voting? Look, we watch the fraud issue very closely in Wisconsin. That'll be part of Chair Wadley's job as well, along with Laura Trump. You know, from my perspective, we recruited 5,500 poll workers, the most ever in a modern record anyway, uh, here in Wisconsin. We'll have thousands of folks who will be watching the election processes. To me, it's part of a larger equation, early vote, uh, protecting the vote and make sure we get new voters to go to the polls. This didn't come to a vote Friday. There was discussion of it. Do you want the RNC to pay legal fees for Trump? See, uh, to the issue to me really isn't about whether we're paying legal fees for President Trump or for anyone else for that matter. It's just a matter of, you know, what lane is the RNC in? And uh, the president's uh, campaign manager, who also had worked here in Wisconsin, has said unequivocally that that will not happen. But I will tell you, President Trump has been the victim of a lot of lawfare hundreds of millions of dollars worth of lawfare. And I don't think Republicans are interested in leaving Donald Trump to fend for himself. I don't think that's a priority for the RNC, but, and I don't really expect that to happen, but we're also not gonna leave President Trump defenseless. 
Republican Party of Wisconsin Chairman Brian Chimmy. Brian, like always, thank you. Great to be with you. President Biden delivering the final State of the Union address of his first term Thursday night. The speech coming off of sweeping victories on Super Tuesday. Democratic Congresswoman Gwen Moore seated next to Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and Republican Derek Van Orden shouting lies during the address. A mental health crisis of isolation and loneliness. A president, my predecessor, failed the most basic presidential duty that he owes to American people, the duty to care. Democratic Congressman Mark Pocan was at the State of the Union. He joins us now from Washington. Congressman, welcome back to Upfront. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. You were in the chamber during the State of the Union address. What did the president have to do and did he do it? I think so. I mean, I, I think what he did is made the case, uh, one, when we had uh, a functioning Congress, which we don't have right now, but in his first two years, we got a lot done. We you know, invested in infrastructure. We're helping reduce costs for Americans. We're building things in America again. And yet he talked about what still has to be done. It is known that you and Congressman Derek Van Orden oftentimes go back and forth, uh, kind of spar each other online. What do you make of him shouting lies during the president's uh, speech? You know, again, just embarrassing. I, I can't tell you how many people um, you will ask me about him because he makes it look like Wisconsin's full of a bunch of drunken fools. And obviously we're not. Uh, but when he does things like that, uh, you know, just to get attention, it's just unbecoming of a member of Congress. I mean, you can be a fangirl of Donald Trump, uh, but you don't uh, have to act like that on the floor of Congress, especially when, remember a few months back, he yelled at a bunch of Senate pages, teenage pages, because they were, um, you know, supposedly breaking decorum of the Capitol. And here he is uh, yelling at a state of the union. It, it's just embarrassing. He should apologize to the president. Um, but, you know, uh, we need to be better. Wisconsin nice needs to actually mean something. And unfortunately, it wasn't shown last night. In response, Congressman Van Orden told the Milwaukee Journey, Journal Sentinel, quote, to disparage President Trump like that is shameful. He went on to say that that was a campaign statement that had nothing to do with the State of the Union. Does he have a point there? I'll tell you, I don't think I've been to a State of the Union speech. I think this is my 12th where you know, someone wouldn't say it's political and how it sounds, right? If you tout your successes and you talk about uh, what you want to get done, uh, often that's a campaign speech. But what's not usual is you know, having an outburst. I mean, you know, when it's Marjorie Taylor Greene and Derek Van Norden nationally who are the most embarrassing figures, um, that's a problem. In Michigan and Minnesota, uh, we saw a significant number of Democrats voting uncommitted uh, in the primaries. Does that concern you uh, heading into the fall general election, those uncommitted votes, uh, a, a protest vote for the president's backing of, of, of Israel? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, right, to watch 30,000 people uh, killed in Gaza, majority women and children, uh, as an overreaction by Benjamin Netanyahu. I think it's a collective punishment rather than going after Hamas, who rightfully so uh, should be uh, targeted because they're the ones who committed the attack, a terrorist organization. Do you back those protest votes? Um, I, I think a protest vote, you know, is still saying I'm going to vote for a Democrat, right? That's why they're uncommitted. But I'm concerned about this, and this is my way of showing that. And, you know, I think uh, I saw 18 percent of the people did that in Minnesota, 29 percent in Hawaii. Look, uh, you know, I've had my conversations with the White House around this, too. I think uh, that, you know, we need to maybe break up with Benjamin Netanyahu, um, support the people of Israel, support the people of Palestine, uh, but not let one political figure uh, really destroy that relationship. I want to ask about Congressman Gallagher's bill that uh, would force TikTok's Chinese parent company ByteDance to divest or face a U.S. ban uh, unanimously. It passed the House committee just this past week. It's expected for a, for a full House floor vote. Uh, will you vote for it? Um, I, I'll be honest. I want a briefing on it. Uh, only the committee got a classified briefing. And up to this point, whenever we've asked for one, they haven't done one. So until they can prove there's a reason um, you know, the real issue there is all of these uh, social media giants and what they do with our data. And there's also a bill that passed out of committee unanimous that I would like to see come to the floor because that way it affects TikTok as well as Facebook, as well as Twitter or X or as, and every other platform. And that protects our data. So I, I'm open to the bill, but I really need to have, whether it's a classified briefing or other, uh, more information because up to now there has not been enough to convince me that it's any one platform, but it's many platforms that we should have issues with. Representative Mark Pocan joining us from Washington. Thank you so much for being here. Always great to see you. Absolutely. Thank you.
Up next, targeting Wisconsin judges, the bills on the verge of passing meant to protect judges and justices statewide. Inside an alarming number of threats, next.